Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-3010. Object Class, Keter, previously Euclid. Special Containment Procedures the word causal absent paranoia is to retain dictionary definition as follows. The healthy brain overreacting to natural stimulus due to overindulgence, excessive stress, lack of sleep, and other such strains to the mind and body. All cultural and social references to the word must be kept in this manner. An instance of SCP-3010-1 is to be contained utilizing a series of falsifications to trap its presence inside a dummy household. One D-Class personnel with extreme reclusive tendencies and a verifiable response to SCP-3010 is to be staged there at all times to prevent containment breach. The D-Class is not to be informed of their role, classification, or location, nor are they to communicate with any outsiders. The D-Class must, in all cases, believe himself to be trapped in an abandoned, unfamiliar house with the entity completely alone. The household has 32 windows and 46 mirrors. The following rooms are to be lit. The bedroom, the west hall, grand hall, rec room, and storage. No other rooms have light fixtures. Food is to be periodically restocked when the resident D-class is a suitable distance from storage. There must be a Scranton reality anchor posed at each corner of the building and two in the vault in the household's basement. Through the windows, a falsified nighttime countryside is to be constructed and kept in a perpetual state of darkness. The door must be bolted shut and reinforced with steel, and all windows must be fitted with 7.5 cm thick windows of bulletproof glass and all walls lined with a 5 cm thick steel composite. These procedures are privy to immediate alteration upon discovery of more effective mass containment for SCP-3010-1 instances. Description SCP-3010 is the anomalous byproduct of a nearly undetectable entity, hereby classified as SCP-3010-1. SCP-3010 is characterized as a sensation of being watched, similar to that of being intensely stared at or observed unwillingly by another human or sentient being. SCP-3010-1 and its effects are inconsistent in their manifestation unless certain specific requirements are met. In particular, small spaces, single room areas, sterile environments, closed off hospital rooms, prisons, etc., and foundation containment cells prove ineffective at causing it to manifest. The only known way to bring about an instance of SCP-3010-1 with complete consistency is to stage a single human in a house or something resembling a living space of at least 500 square meters with minimal lighting. Any other cases of SCP-3010-1 appearance seem to be random. The entity has few known physical traits and a certain set of tendencies in its pursuit of others. It only pursues solitary humans, generally between the age of 16 to 40. It cannot pursue pilots of automobiles or other fast-moving vehicles. Its most common victims tend to be alone in their own property, and the time frame follows the trend of 12 a.m. to sunrise, which limits the sample space to individuals with a tendency to remain awake at those times. Oftentimes, those who experience SCP-3010 tend to report it from behind. If their back is to the wall, they tend to avoid the nearest window or dark corner. Mirrors cause extreme aversion in sufferers of SCP-3010, and they often flee to sections of their house that lack both of the aforementioned objects. SCP-3010 sufferers cannot sleep under any circumstances. This is not due to fear, but a fundamental part of SCP-3010-1 that manipulates parts of the brain that control melatonin production, dream regulation, and sleep induction, making them completely inoperable. It is assumed to be caused by a very faint insertion of a gaseous substance into the local atmosphere. This is classified as CAP-induced insomnia and also given a medical explanation. SCP-3010-1 is perceived as passively hostile to humankind. It has a specific set of triggers that, when activated, will cause it to the subject. Detail in Addendum SCP-3010-A 
the triggers tend to be the following. Actively hunting the source of SCP-3010 with intent to destroy or harm, prolonged contact with mirrors, windows or unlit rooms, long periods of sustained silence, direct contact with the presence of the entity, panic, blood, and any attempt to contact other human beings. If two of these triggers are met greater than three times, with the exception of attempted contact or awareness of the entity which instantly activates it, the entity will activate, performing one of the previously mentioned acts. The rate of survival is precisely 0%. Avoidance of human interaction, for example avoidant disorders, can either have an extreme attraction effect or an extreme repellent effect on the entity. Individuals who excel in human interaction, particularly sociopaths, produce a strange relatively unknown effect that can cause several severe anomalies. Testing is not advised. One such incident is detailed in recordings from D-17729. Currently, Site 2C is used primarily for information gathering. As there are likely hundreds of thousands of instances of SCP-3010-1, it is considered less of a containment operation and more of a wildlife observation venture. If any information on the nature of SCP-3010-1's presence, congregation, locations, quantity or otherwise related traits are discovered, they should be reported to Site-2C's overseers immediately, upon which any needed containment procedures will be amended. Mass containment of SCP-3010-1 instances are a high priority. Addendum SCP-3010-A SCP-3010-1 Known Psychological Traits and Habits As of the current time, little is known of the physical appearance locations, dependence on humans, or origin of SCP-3010-1 instances. However, due to the continued containment of a particular instance, the following information has been discovered. Number 1. SCP-3010-1 is not perceivable in any wavelength of light, even in instances of Class D personnel seeking the entity in a manner implying that they can visualize or pinpoint its location. The only tell of its location is given after a reactive incident. Number 2. SCP-3010-1 has a particular reaction towards those expressive of avoidant disorders. Simply put, about 50% of individuals with avoidant disorders do not react to anything in scenarios where SCP-3010-1 would manifest. Those that it can interact with, however, express complete incompatibility of producing a reactive incident even if they enact any of the triggers for such incidents. These cases seem to feel the effects of SCP-3010 at a higher intensity than normal. Number 3. SCP-3010-1's biological appearance and structure are unknown. However, it is apparent that SCP-3010-1 is still constrained by physical variables and thus has a degree of physical presence. If a victim is contained within a small space, minimum of 3.5 cubic meters, or is within an area that has all entrances secure and no mirrors or windows present, SCP-3010-1 will not manifest. For this reason, no doors in Site-2C can lock and will always open on their own after 30 minutes. This implies that SCP-3010-1 cannot pass through physical matter other than windows and mirrors and does in fact have a specific height, apparently above 3.5 meters. Using similar experimentation, SCP-3010-1 appears to be somewhere around 15 to 20 centimeters in width. Number 4. Upon enough of the aforementioned triggers being activated, a reactive event begins. These events are preceded with an extreme spike in the levels of adrenaline in the victim, and they respond with an immediate panicked reaction. At this stage, SCP-3010-1 will manifest in the following ways. Through mirrors, windows, or The entity will apparently proceed to extruding the victims. Subsequently, the newly carved bone matter will retract into the breach, where the entity emerged, and the remains of the victim will Number 5. When a reactive event is triggered, a cognitohazard manifests in the form of a total memory erasure where any associated memories of the persons involved in the event are destroyed. This can be easily circumvented, however, 
by keeping written documents of the victims on hand at all times, or by a suitable amount of Scranton reality anchors active within the area. The reason written information is retained through this is unknown. Note one exception. Those influenced by the spatial anomaly, see number seven, can be erased from written documentation as well. However, this is inconsistent and does not always occur. Traces of their names and background remain interspersed throughout documentation. Number six. After such an event, the instance of SCP-3010-1 supposedly enters a state of stasis. This can only be proven by the fact that all mirrors and windows within a meter radius appear opaque to all forms of light, and normal SCP-3010 symptoms are reported by all humans in this region. Number 7. After a reactive event, a rapid deconstruction of the environment surrounding the incident begins. This spatial anomaly occurs around seconds after the event. The anomaly causes the area surrounding to rapidly expand and populate into a series of tight dark corridors and small rooms filled with mirrors and reflective surfaces. The expansion of this space appears to leak from any mirrors or reflective surfaces present. A single exploration has been attempted and recorded following a particular reactive incident. See Addendum Exploration Log from Testing Site 2A for details. This effect is entirely mitigated by Scranton Reality Anchors. Number 8. Only occurrences of a reactionary event have been detected. The spatial anomaly that follows dissipates after hours, but SCP-3010 symptoms persist indefinitely within meters of the event location. Whether this implies that the instance of SCP-3010-1 stasis is indefinite is uncertain. Recordings from D-17729 The following text is taken from a small camera audio recording device implanted within D-17729's body before containment. D-17729 was a Caucasian male, 39 years, that exhibited no signs of social ineptitude. Date of recordings ranged from December 1st to December 10th, 1990. Subject awakens in bedroom B. D-17729 stands up, clutching his head. What? Where am I? What the f*** is going on? Hello? This isn't my cell. God, what am I on right now? Subject stands, proceeds to exit through the doorway to the bedroom hall. Shit, that's dark. Hey, is anybody there? Subject continues through the upper floor, reaches the staircase into foyer. F. Light is set to on. Symptoms of SCP-3010 surface lightly, with occasional looks behind him. What the hell? Nobody behind you, Mike. You're fine. Door's locked? Subject begins attempt to bash door down. Failure. What kind of house is this? Is it nighttime? Shit. Proceeding three hours are of subject navigating the containment cell, occasionally musing to himself. Symptoms of SCP-3010 rapidly surface, and subject begins to develop an extremely severe aversion to the unlit areas of containment. One day after containment, wedged in foyer corner. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Please, God, let me wake up. Two days after containment, subject in bedroom, or light fixtures are on, faced away from mirrors in southeastern corner. I need food. I need food. Storage rooms downstairs. Through dark. Nobody's here, Mike. You're not afraid of the dark. It's there. F me. There it is. I, I, I'm not alone. F off! You sick f Let me out! <sighs> Shit. <clears throat> Made it. <sighs> Good lord, I'm staying here until I die. <sighs> Light and food. <sighs> Thank god. Subject closes and locks vault. Begins eating. Thirty minutes later, door reopens. You've got to be kidding. Four days after containment, 
Subject is still in storage room. All shelves have been disassembled, fashioned into a makeshift barrier obstructing the basement hall from sight. I need to kill it. Not even in here. Not safe here. The light only works a little, then you're done for. I need sleep. God, I need sleep. Seven days after containment, Subject is in storage room corner. Wiring from walls has been torn out using a makeshift crowbar, and extra light fixtures have been used to keep the entire room at a state of brightness. D-17729 was previously an electrical engineer, and such activity was expected, so no action will be taken. This isn't a dream, is it? Nine days after containment, Subject has fashioned a makeshift suit covered in light fixtures with a portable crank generator. Noted that generator must be removed upon subject's termination. Take it back to them. Kill them all. Not alone. Not alone. Take the light to their door. Not alone. More light. More light. More light. This continues for about four hours before subject falls asleep. Reason for this is, as of now, unknown. As sleep in SCP-3010-1's presence is extremely rare, if not impossible in all cases. Upon awakening, storage has been restocked, and lights have been put out. Subject's light jacket is left alone to prevent disturbance from sleep. Subject reawakens. Ha! <laughs> Stole my light! But I have me! Stop me now, fool! Need weapon. Come at them, destroy them! Tomorrow, we fight! Tomorrow, I win! Tomorrow, I win! Ten days after containment, barrier has been disassembled. Subject begins to rapidly move throughout containment, searching for instances of SCP-3010-1. Appears to discover something within Grand Hall. Found you! Found you! Found you! <laughs> Don't try and hide! I have light! 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 And I found you! Come out! Subject rushes towards an unknown position in Grand Hall, near Piano. Upon Subject's approach, the start of a reactive event begins, but appears to fail. Three mirrors in the vicinity begin to output minimal light. Subject can be briefly seen making contact with one of the mirrors before screaming. Connection with the recording device is lost. Site 2A undergoes spatial anomaly and is evacuated. Exploration Log from Testing Site 2A Ruined State The following is a transcript of the events surrounding the exploration of Site 2A, where an instance of SCP-3010-1 was undergoing containment when it began a reactive event in response to D-17729. Exploration Unit MTF-66, eight blind men, sent in to attempt to locate Grand Hall and recover any indications of a reactive event or remnants of D-17729. Speakers are Resident Overseer Dr. Obrant, MTF-66 Captain, Cap, and members of MTF-66, 1-7. All right, Doc. We're waiting outside the site. Orders? Enter the site. Report any signs of cognito hazards or interruptions of mental faculties immediately. That goes for all you guys. We don't know what might happen in there. Aye, aye. Everyone else got the message too. We're heading in now. Group takes 10 minutes and 32 seconds to navigate hall. We're through. No kitchen. Just another foyer. Spatial anomaly is in full swing. That was 10 minutes on our side, Captain. How about you? Uh, 30 seconds. Time dilation. Noted. Could be linked to hallways since communication isn't being stretched. Be wary of long passages. It's gonna be tough. Nothing but hallways here. He's right. We're at a copy of the foyer, but everything just goes into another hallway. Noted. Pick the shortest and proceed. Group moves on through about eight hallways. Time taken equates to roughly 2.3 hours. Group is inside of a copy of the Grand Hall. Mirrors appear to be scattered about the room. Wait, something's wrong. What is it? Where's eight? Who? MTF-66-8, Carlos... There's only seven members of MTF-66, Captain. I've never heard of that name before. <sighs> shit. Captain's body camera flips around to show the rest of MTS-66. Five are present. F five. Where's six and seven? We only have five members, sir. Are you all right? No, goddammit, we have eight! 
with eight blind men for f**k's sake. Where'd they go? Captain, I need you to report for me. Is there any potential cognitohazardous effect currently altering your mindset? No. No, they were here a second ago. Where did they go? We have to find them. Captain rushes off to an adjacent hallway. Group attempts to pursue. They pass through 12 hallways. Six hours pass with no significant activity. Sir, you have to stop. We need to return, sir. F off three. We need to find six and seven. Oh, God, and there's an eight, too. I almost forgot. Oh, God, I almost forgot about him. Captain, pull out now. There's a severe cognitohazardous effect occurring. Pull out. MTF-66-1 through 3 lose sight of Captain. Subsequently, their body cameras begin to shut down. My God, what is that? No more transmissions are received from the group for 8 hours. At 0200 on the following day, Captain's microphone returns. Hello? Anybody? Come on, guys, please. One, three, over and... Doc, so many... They... Captain? Captain, are you there? Respond! I'm here. Now, it's dark. Cold. How do I get out? We'll try to extract you. Describe your surroundings. Are there any windows? What? An attic. It's dark. It's made of one window. I sent the order to turn on the lights surrounding Site 2C. Did they come on for you? Yeah. Shit, yeah. I gotta break this window. I gotta get out. Thank God! It's bulletproof. You need to bash it with the butt of your rifle or something blunt. We'll wait in front. Aye, aye. Break your feet. The sounds repeat for several minutes. Captain fails to shatter the window. Note, security cameras 2A, 3A, 5B, and 4C, positioned towards all attic windows, picked up no movement or activity in this time. Nothing is visible through the windows from the exterior. Captain, are you through? Shit, there's mirrors in here too. Got her on after all. Captain, stop! Get back to the window! Cap's body cam comes online briefly, shows a short shot of the Grand Hall with several thousand mirrors. It quickly cuts off. No more responses received following. Site 2A closed until reactive event subsides. After the effect subsides, Site 2A is examined. Captain's remains are not located. MTF-66-1 through 3 remains are not located. MTF-66, 3 blind men, marked as killed in action. Note. SCP-3010's anomalous effect has appeared to influence this document in the form of affecting the title and membership of MTF-66. All records of MTF-66 have been destroyed. No further explorations of reactive sites are permitted. Changes have been made to this document since you opened it. Would you like to see them? Proper credentials recognized. Showing recent edits. User. Air date corrupt. Erasure needed. Access document. User. Air date corrupt. Erasure needed. Edited line. The entity has no known physical traits. Eyes. Eyes. User. Air date corrupt. Erasure needed. Edited line. As there are likely hundreds of thousands, infinite instances of SCP-3010-1. User. Air date corrupt. Erasure needed. Added line. SCP-3010 is not real. I am not real. It's dark. User. Air date corrupt. Erasure needed. Added line. They've got eyes in the back of their head. They've got eyes in the back of their mouth. User. Air date corrupt. Erasure needed. Added new file. Addendum SCP-3010-X. Truth. You can see me now, right? I found a screen here. Foundation drivel. Real stuff. Not like the dark. It even mentions me here. The number. 17729. That's me. So they knew me. So it wasn't the start of a nightmare. So this is real. Maybe. Unless the Foundation isn't, but I remember the number. It's been a long while, Foundation. Halls and halls and a handful of rooms don't make for a good company. And it's dark here. Really dark. They probably hate it here because it's so dark. Waste of all their eyes. <laughs> I want to tell you something, Foundation. It's called 
3010, right? 3010 is bad. Bad, bad, bad. And there's lots of them, I think. I know it, but it, it's hard to explain. Do you know how each person you meet has a specific feeling? It's like that. They all want you outside, but in here, they care less. Maybe they can't see here, but they feel unique. I remember the stare that that first one had, like it was touching me with its eyes. Such a profound feeling. No, not now. These ones feel different, like people. So I know there's lots. They walk about the long halls, through the big mirrors, maybe out into real stuff that I can't go through. And if they touch me, I wonder if I'll really die. Die. <laughs> I wonder. It's been so long, Foundation. I think I might touch them. But what if I do? They don't like us, Foundation. But they watch us. They watch us for so long. They must want to touch us. But they can't. We can touch them, though. Why do they hate us, Foundation? Why do they hate me? Why is it so dark? Why am I alone? Oh, mine's coming. Out of the mirror. One for every room. Right behind me. Right behind you. Us. Goodbye. Note, these edits were discarded due to the following discrepancies. Date discrepancy, location discrepancy, editor PC does not follow the following constraints. Date does not match file server date, date must be between 1-1-1900 and 1-1-10,000. IP location must be within 500,000 kilometers of host. Editor PC was locked, 85 edit attempts made. Requesting human intervention. Unlock, yes or no? No. Acknowledge. Editor PC permanently locked. I would like to give a special thank you to Zargaran. O Crap Guy, Rowan O'Brien, James Saba, Lost Boy, Signar, your local foundation agent, Zazapan, Cupster, Dean Dingus, Braided Peach, Sato Voce, Oscuro Vision, Simon the Skink, Grimnir, Extra Moments 123, Wes, and Swift Raw. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.